Now just a reminder that analyzing phrasing in the score is just a half way of work. You need to have skills of playing phrasing with intonation, weight and musical speech. Uh, then your phrasing will be natural and expressive. I talked about the length and shapes of motifs, phrases and sentences more in depth in my previous video about phrasing. So if you're interested why I'm choosing the length and contour of phrasing uh, this way, Mm, just click the link above. The length of a motif it is usually a bar across the bar line, um, and again, it's usually we're gonna shape every motif towards the last interval. So you can see it clearly on the screen. Now you probably already know that hairpins are not all the design of dynamic changes. Chopin simply wanted to show the ways of breathing, the phrasing lines with his music. Now, sometimes you will see hairpins towards the middle section of the bar, like for example here. And um, that kind of makes us a bit confused <laughs> about uh, motif shapes, uh, giving us an idea that we should come towards the middle section of the bar. Um, but Basically, don't be fooled by that. <laughs> Keep the same motif contour um, towards the last interval. So it's here, over here, and then over there. Uh, you need to understand that maybe Chopin simply didn't want those notes to sound this way. Flat, not expressive. So he kept writing those hairpins towards those notes to tell us that uh, these are the notes that are important and we shouldn't miss them. So what we need to do in this case is keep the same motif line, yet intonating these repetitive notes with unison and musical speech. Um, you know, even without dynamical crescendo, just by feeling tension between notes, that will be enough to emphasize uh, these notes. So, if I would sing, you can clearly hear what I mean. So this, for example, without anything, right? And this is with musical speech. So I will still have the intention to come to this Notes are very expressive. And you don't have to make any dynamical crescendo. Actually, you can make even even an end of the end. when you would play with motifs and again you can always ex 
extend the time to one minute interval. You can always take a breath, a break after the motif. And of course, it's gonna sound a little bit clumsy when you're gonna play by motif, but later when you're gonna uh, play by bigger blocks, like phrases and sentences, it's all gonna start making uh, much sense. So. So don't just repeat this note or whatever you want to change voice. But find some kind of um, also idea here. So you might break it into three small, I would call it sub motifs, I guess. So to bring this, in a way, repetitive monotonal theme, uh, a bit mysterious in my opinion, uh, by changing the, mm, how to say, the way, uh, oh god, the relationship between the melody and the bars. So basically, sometimes he starts in the middle of the bar, the same theme, and sometimes he starts in the beginning of the bar. So it all changes. Um, when it all changes the melody, when we're gonna start playing by motif, we're gonna feel it. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first one will come here. phrases uh, the length of a phrase uh, is gonna it's gonna be varied here as you can see on the screen it could be two or three bars in other words two or three motifs mm, this one. the first phrase has three uh, next one two also three uh, for example here okay every, everywhere is three so far okay, let, uh, let's take a look at the last one so here it's two Um, okay, I think that's clear. 
So now we're going to shape every phrase following harmonic tensions and melodic uh, contour. Uh, let me explain what I mean. So if um, a motif um, has a more tense harmony, that's going to be more prominent motif. And the motif with, uh, let's say, descending falling melody uh, is going to be less prominent. Um, so let's see. For example, uh, let's look at the first phrase. So yeah, this is our first phrase. It's kind of, it's hard because the melody goes down and melody goes up, so it's not really trustful. Uh, in this case, start comparing the, um, as you can see in the circles, there are harmonies that are on the main intervals of every motif. Of every motif. So if you just compare them, the picture becomes much more clear. So the first more intense, and then less intense. In the second phrase, again, you know, it's kind of descending, so again, the first motif would be more important. Next one. So, well, the middle section. <laughs> the middle one is more important. And then. And also, not even by the Har harmonies, you can also see clear by again melodic shape here. It's very obvious. It's going higher, ascending, and going down. So this the first motif gonna be more important. And the same you can continue with um, others. So again, if you would play by um, phrases. You would stop after every phrase, you would maybe take more time, don't be afraid to emphasize, to let, actually, to give yourself more time, you know, um, to feel more prominent motif. Like, for example, this one. Even if you play like this. But in this mm, part of the piece, as I can see, there are going to be only two phrases in, in the sentence. And again, I separate um, every sentence with a vertical line, so it would be easier for us um, to navigate <laughs> through, through all the sentences. Um, now, here comes the interesting part, because we need to find more prominent phrases in every sentence. And uh, that could be a little bit confusing. Um, um, as you know, uh, we can pay attention to articulation, dynamics, harmonies, uh, melodic shape, you know, falling or rising melody, rhythm. And here, all those methods um, kind of didn't clarify much for me. So, um, the only method 
that worked was harmonic comparison. And um, basically what I did is I compared the harmonies in the main intervals of the main motifs in the phrases. And then I structure sentences by harmonic tension. So again, as you can see, um, all the circle uh, har harmonies belong to the main intervals of main motifs of the phrase. So let's just go through them and see the first sentence. So that's why I made, as you can see with the red color, the first phrase more important. So this is basically... And this is less. And then the next one. So, <laughs> again, the first more important. So when I play... for me. Next one. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> it's the second more intense. That's why. For me, this is more open and sharp, and this is more introvert. So I made the first phrase more important. Now, um, here it's kind of funny because due to he, uh, due to his changes of the melody. Um, you know, because he started the first part of the melody on a certain beat. Now he changes the beat for the melody. That's why the harmonies of the main intervals of the main motifs now also changed. That's why, as you can see here, the main phrase is going to be the other way around. So let's take a look. Open, so that's why I make second phrase more important. Next one. Wow, this one actually has three phrases. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, so as you can see. Uh, So that's why it becomes more intense in the second chord. That's why second phrase more important. Okay. And this kind of makes sense because you want to say this last final you know, word very prominent. <laughs> Uh, to conclude this um, theme. All right, so uh, I think that's about it. <laughs> and um, I hope you learned something new today. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.